Yeah, this is the uh, MD file. And this time I've added the, I'm not really sure what's that on, on the neck. It's a puff, uh, like a ruffle, probably a ruffle. I'm not sure how I, how to approach the folds and how to just approach the ruffle as a whole. And I did some morph target with the corset. For, for now, it looks fine. I'm going to retouch it later on. And for the pants, do I need to do more of target with the with the boots later on or or not? Okay, let's look at the neck first. So here you're trying to go for a uh, some some type of scarf. You're trying to go for something. Uh... Yeah, uh, some some type of a Victorian ruffle. I actually have a Pinterest file that I can share in a minute. So which one of these are you trying to do? Because they're all actually very different. I'm gonna try to do the one which is. Uh, at the at the at the bottom, so yeah. I'm for now, exploring uh, what I can do in MD. Here's pretty much how we go about doing this one here. I would start with a circle, uh, almost as if we were doing a circle skirt. So I'll uh, I'll make a circle here. So first of all, let me just uh, make one here. So let's just do one like that, and then uh, let's bring it so that it has more or less the dimensions that we kind of wanted to have. So could go and I could start to measure this and maybe I will have to, but for now I'm kind of interested to try and just uh, just more or less just go with it with my own eye. All right, this is way too big. Let's scale it down. Let's make it a lot smaller. Needs to be a lot smaller actually, yeah, about, about that or so. It's probably a good starting point. Let's move it in place. Let's make a hole through it so that the head can go through it, of course. So let's go to like that. Let's go in here. Let's take a uh, internal ellipse, R as a shortcut. Let's snap to the center of this thing here. Let's make it about like that. Uh, now, this is one of the things that you could actually go and you could actually measure it so that you have the exact measurement that you need. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing to do. Um, but we'll see if we, if we need to do that. Okay, uh, well, all right, so I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna right-click on it, I'm going to convert to hole. So it's going to uh, make this an actual hole there. And then let's just uh, scale it up. Just like that, let's make it a bit smaller. All right, so I would start with that. Uh, now this here, yeah, I think that's fine. Let me go ahead and uh, disable everything and only enable this and this so that there's only these two pieces that get uh, simulated and let's sew these two together. So ideally I would like the seam to be here in the back just because it would be easier to manage, although on the side is fine too, I suppose, but I guess it's just a little personal preference for now. Let me just move this a bit further towards the back. About here, let's do a cut and sew. Let's take this, let's do a merge. Oh, this, this cut did not go all the way through. Extend to pattern outline, cut and sew. Yeah, for some reason this, uh, oh, now my merge works. Okay, that's good. All right, so there's that. Now, you know, I can sort of easily align all of this together. So let's do that. I would like to have All right, let's try to simulate and see what happens. All right, not too bad so far. And the way that I would approach doing the uh, the ruffles, if you will, these things, uh, I would first, I would cut these inward. So let's add another internal ellipse, about like that. Let's cut it out. So let's do a cut and sew. All right, so now you have two pieces. Okay, now this one's uh, this one's going to get interesting, but it shouldn't be too hard. So let's uh, let's do something here. Let's split this off in four sections. Let's start with four, and we'll see if we need more. Uh, okay, so four sections. Let's split these off. Let's do a cut and sew. So we wind up having four sections like these. So this would be here. This there. This there. This there. Now, what I essentially need is just make these uh, two to three times longer than what they are. So right now, this is uh, let's see here. This is twenty three dot forty six. 
centimeters. So I need this to be about maybe twice, like three times would be, no, three times would give you some very, very ample pleats. So maybe two is actually better. So I want these to be literally twice as long as they are right now. Um, truth be told, we don't need to be that precise with measurements. There's kind of like a, there's like a, always a bit of a, a push to be like extremely uh, careful with measuring stuff inside of uh, Marlos Designer. But like, truth be told, like these things in real life, they're cut with scissors. They're often drawn on uh, patterns on, on the flat pieces of textile and cut out of there. Like there's tiny little imprecision in the way that these things are constructed in real life that I kind of like to preserve that uh, as much as I can really. So um, so I was going to just uh, literally just stretch this out, but uh, there's actually an easier way I could actually do that. I could do something like this here. I could just duplicate this. Or rotate it like that. Uh, let's erase all the seams because they're going to be a problem. Let's sew these two together. Let's take these points, convert to curve point. Okay, in fact, let me get rid of all of these. And I will uh, duplicate this four times. And I'll make them all uh, instances of uh, each other. So let's do that. Let's do a instance pattern. Now what I want, I want uh, this to be sewn here. I want this to be sewn there. This one sewn here. And this one sewn there, like that. And then this sewn to this, this sewn to that. And this sewn here, and this one sewn to its starting, to the starting one, like that. Okay, let me freeze these two. I think that's it. I think that's all I have to do. Let's just simulate. Just magic. I know, right? Yeah, so like the particle distance is a bit too high right now. Uh, so I, I definitely need to bring this down. So let's make it, uh, let's go for like, yeah, 10, I guess. You have to go lower for uh, the best possible ruffles, I suppose, but it's gonna be fine for now. Yeah, so so maybe twice was a little too long. Uh, I could have made these about 1.5. I mean, it would be easy at this point to just uh, take this border and say like, no, actually, you know what? I kind of want this to be as long as this actually, so. Simpler thing would be to actually do this. I guess I'm starting to be a little too dirty here, but I think that should be okay. Like, uh, so they're not gonna be as long, so you're gonna get a bit less ruffles. And like, you know, the kind of multiplier, if, if you will, will control the amount of uh, ruffling that you're gonna get. Anyway, that's kind of how we go about uh, doing that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I can see that. And probably for the um, other for the for the uh, layers, I can do an internal line and make some cuts and then stitch them stitch them back. Oh, for like, like these here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for yeah. The, yeah. All right. Pretty all much. Right. Yeah. yeah. I have an idea what I can do after that. All right, and uh, lastly, for the for the um, for the pants, uh, do I use morph targets with with the boots to to get the uh, folds that I have on the concept, or I or I do that by hand with some taping and stuff like that? Morph target for for what exactly to get the uh... yeah to get the, the these uh, these uh, puffy folds um on the pants. Oh, you see, uh, Morph Target in uh, Marvel's Designer, not in ZBrush, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure it's strictly necessary. Like, you could also do... It's not strictly necessary to do that. You could also do it like this. Let me take... Uh, let me reactivate these. You could also, like, truth be told, you could probably do something more like this here. So let's find wherever these... Uh, we would want the boots to end, I guess, here or something like that. And then here's what I'm going to do. So so uh, I guess, well, I need to do it on both sides, I suppose. So this is connected to that. So I suppose my internal line will have to be about here or so. Maybe at the same height. 
extend trim to pattern outline. Okay, so here's what I would do. I, I would simply go in here, uh, add a tape. Uh, that's the wrong button. Let's add a, uh, just a surface or a basic circumference. I see you have one. Great, we can use that. Well, that may be all that we need then. So let's simply attach this then. So attach to measure. So I'll just do that and do that in the back. Uh, I can't select because this is in the way, I suppose. I guess should be all you need really. And it's going to do this here like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I actually experimented with that, but I just wanted to see if there was a better approach. So, yeah. Yeah, I think this is the better approach because the morph target will create, uh, will very likely create collision problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 